49ers playing just about perfectly so far. Rice! Touchdown! Holy cow! These days, we bestow the greatest of all time title to many athletes, perhaps too loosely. But Jerry Rice, a former 49ers wide receiver, can lay a legit claim to being the GOAT. When you think about the NFL's top receivers, Jerry Rice's name pops up. Rice spent a whopping 20 seasons in the NFL and had a lot of success. Now, the Hall of Famer sired two sons. For sure, a first impression can reveal a lot about a person, but for Brendan Rice, there's more than what meets the eye. And Jerry Rice Jr., like many football star's children, tried to follow in his father's footsteps. Stay tuned to find out how good Jerry Rice's sons actually are. Jerry Rice is an American professional football player born in October 1962. He played primarily for the San Francisco 49ers and set a host of NFL records, including 1,549 receptions, 208 career touchdowns, and 22,895 reception yardage. The star is the son of a brick mason who employed Rice and his brothers and his assistants during the hot southern summers. Rice developed his skill by catching bricks that his brothers threw at him. In turn, his hands became strong and reliable. Rice's skills later on landed a football scholarship at Mississippi Valley State University. At the school, he did not disappoint. The star earned All-America honors and set 18 records in Division IAA of the National Collegiate Athletic Association, including most catches in a single game of 24. The San Francisco 49ers drafted Rice in the first round of the 1985 NFL Draft. Initially, he struggled to hold on to them while he focused on the intricate pass patterns of the San Francisco offense. Being a fast learner, in his second season, he caught 86 passes and led the league with 1,570 reception yardage and 15 touchdown receptions. Jerry Rice thrived in the hands of Bill Walsh, San Francisco's head coach. Walsh's West Coast offense relied on many short, quick passes by the quarterback and precise route running by the receivers. On top of that, he was an excellent runner after making a catch. Rice participated in three Super Bowl championship teams with the 49ers in the 1988, 89, and 1994 seasons. Rice, along with quarterback Joe Montana and defensive back Ronnie Lott, became virtually synonymous with the team. Rice was named the most valuable player of Super Bowl 23 in the 1988 season and set numerous Super Bowl records. He was also named to the annual Pro Bowl from 1986 through 1998. In a controversial move to develop young players, the 49ers traded Rice to the Oakland Raiders before the 2001 season. The following season, he became the first player to register more than 200 career touchdowns as he helped the Raiders reach Super Bowl 37, where they were defeated by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In 2003, the football legend made his 13th Pro Bowl appearance. Midway through the 2004 season, Rice was traded to the Seattle Seahawks, but he was released by the team at the end of the season. After an unsuccessful attempt to become a starting receiver for the Denver Broncos the following year, he signed a ceremonial one-day contract with San Francisco and retired as a 49er. Rice was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2010. With such a legendary career, it is without a doubt that Jerry Rice has good football genes. Let's have a look at his sons and see if they're as good as their legendary father. His son Brendan Rice put together a breakout game for the University of Colorado last year. Brendan scored a long pair of touchdowns for the Buffs. First came an 81-yard punt return before the receiver took a quick hitch route all the way to the house for a 61-yard score. Brendan Rice, son of Hall of Famer Jerry Rice, became the first Colorado player with a receiving touchdown and a punt return for a touchdown in a game in the past 25 seasons, Sports Center quoted in December 2020. Indeed, we don't remember Jerry Rice having that type of breakaway speed. Anyway, living up to his dad's legacy might be impossible, but it's cool to see Brendan record his first multi-touchdown effort in just the fifth game of his college career. Standing at 6 feet and 3 inches, Brendan weighs 205 pounds. Even before joining college, he was a four-star high school prospect. The nostalgic fans in us would love to see him wearing number 80 on his jersey, but seeing him wear number 2 isn't bad either. To 49ers fans, do you feel old yet? Brendan Rice's pair of touchdowns are worth talking about. On Brendan's first career punt return, he blazed through the snow and Utah's punt team to lead Colorado. After halftime, he showed off even more wheels with the screen pass. He reached the end zone via a soft spot in the Utah defense. Sadly, it became all Utah from there. The Utes scored four unanswered touchdowns and won 38-21. Brendan is rated a four-star wide receiver by rivals. In his first year in Colorado, he had 120 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. We believe that is plenty to like about Brendan's future, considering his pedigree, speed, and length. However, Colorado's exercised some caution after the game. 
The coach said, It was fun to see him get a chance to make a few plays. He's a good young player, he's a player we feel has a lot of upside, and he's trending up and getting better week after week. Now, if drop passes are a concern for Jerry Rice's younger son, then we can think of at least one person who can work with him on that. His coach, Carl Dorrell. Following Brendan's achievements, we can confidently say that Jerry's son has some profound big play ability. He is turning into quite the player for the Colorado Buffaloes. Now enough of Brendan, let's look at his elder brother, Jerry Rice Jr. He was born on July 27, 1991. Rice Jr. is a former American football wide receiver. He played college football for the UNLV Rebels and UCLA Bruins. In 2014, the Washington Redskins signed him as an undrafted free agent. Jerry Rice Jr. played college football at the University of California, Los Angeles. In 2013, Rice Jr. graduated with a bachelor's degree. In his final year in college, he decided to forego eligibility with the Bruins to earn his master's degree at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. At the University of Nevada, he played football with the Rebels. However, after college, Rice Jr. had a tryout for the Baltimore Ravens. Unfortunately, he wasn't signed. He also tried out for his dad's former team, the San Francisco 49ers, but failed to make the roster. The team trimmed him from the roster when it needed to cut down to the mandatory maximum of 90 players. After that, on June 26, 2014, he signed a contract with the Washington Redskins. He was excited and promised to get the Redskins back to the promised land. Rice Jr. said that the team would get 110% out of him. In August the same year, bad luck struck. Rice Jr. suffered a torn labrum in training camp. As a result, the Redskins waived him with an injury designation. After clearing the waivers, young Rice got placed on the Redskins injured reserve. Later on, he played in Montreal in the Canadian Football League for two years. In 2016, he was released by the Montreal Alouettes. At UCLA, Rice Jr. only appeared in nine games in his four years at the university. His production was minimal while working with the Rebels, though he made more impact there in one year than he had made in his entire career in UCLA. He had 19 receptions for 142 yards. Rice Jr. had 39 individual games in his career where he amassed more than 142 yards. You have to agree that comparisons between the two are entirely unfair if inevitable. Rice Jr. was just attempting to make a name for himself. At a 49ers minicamp, Rice Jr. said he was Rice Jr. and not Rice Sr., and it was time to make his own name. He declined an offer made by the 49ers to wear his father's number 80, which was retired by the franchise. Instead, he chose number 83, which had no such blocks on the number. The number was neither retired nor occupied by a player listed on the official roster. Standing at 5'10 and weighing 185 pounds, Rice Jr. ran a 4.68 second 40-yard dash, and he was primarily a non-elite athlete. With all that said, history indicates that it's a fool's errand to bet against the Rice family on Sundays.